From the Central Western Washington area, Choice Regional Health Network presents the Equity Circle Podcast, a place for information with integrity, accountability, and innovation. Enjoy the episode. All right, everyone, welcome to the Equity Circle Podcast. My name is Lawrence Kinneman, and I am your host. I uh, would like to welcome uh, a previous guest on the show and a new guest on the show. So I'll start uh, Shelly Willis and Jody Smaytek. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Always happy to be here with you. Yes, thank you, Lawrence. Um, I really appreciate this and looking forward to it. Yeah, and Jody, did I say your last name right? I want to make sure. Okay. Um, just want to make sure. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, why don't we do some introductions first before we get started? Shelly, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Shelly Willis, and I'm the Director of Family Education and Support Services. I'm a mom and almost married 40 years uh, and, and happy to be collaborating with Choice Regional Health Network to provide vaccination clinics in a four-county area. Awesome. Well, and congratulations, 40 years. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm a high school sweetheart, and he's an amazing guy. I'm honored to be there with him. Awesome. And Jody, how about you? Hi, I'm Jody Smetek, and I am the Director of Education at Family Education and Support Services, and also working the vaccina- vaccination mm-hmm. clinics. And I, too, am a mom of 22-year-old twins, I am also a foster parent, so lots of littles and different age kids in and out of my home. Mm. Thank you, Lawrence. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Thank you for doing that. I think foster care is uh, such a big and difficult thing to do, Um, so thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Um, Well, thank you both for spending some time with us today just on the podcast. We wanted to talk about um, really just specifically around the COVID vaccine clinics you know, as we're recording this, it's, it is Valentine's day. Um, and, you know, as we're recording this, it's, it's definitely been, um, we're getting to a point where it is challenging, where we're, we're hitting some walls and there's definitely been some, um, barriers to people getting vaccinated or, you know, starting to see some people outright refuse to be vaccinated. And so, you know, it's definitely caused some challenges. Uh, but I think sometimes, even in that, it can be hard to remember some of the good things that are still going on and the partnerships that are being built. So my first question is for you, Jody. Can you talk about, you know, despite some of the challenges, you know, that um, those that are providing these clinics face, talk about some of the bright spots that you've experienced even over this last couple of months uh, with vaccine clinics? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So there are, you're right, Lawrence, there are, there are spots that are definitely positive. Um, you know, we've had, we've had clinics where folks will sign up for a spot to get vaccinated, or they would just walk in. And uh, we've had a lot of people, especially depending on the venue that we're at, that they walk in and ask if they could just get one um, as a walk-in or they have other family members and ask, you know, since we're here, since they're with me, can they get one? And, you know, I think that that's been really positive. We've got a lot of feedback on that. Um, And the partnerships, the partnerships have been great. You know, I didn't know you before this job, Lawrence, and I've really gotten to know you and it's been great. Um, But yeah. Awesome. Well, and I think the partnership, aspect is is so important because I think that's what makes these clinics successful and um, how we continue to move forward with them. Um, Shelly, what, what were you going to add to that? Well, I agree with Jody. The partners we've been able to uh, grow relationships with have just been a big bonus for us. And the facilities we've been able to collaborate with, we've been at the Squaxin Tribe and the Skokomish Tribe. We've been at um, casinos, event centers, and we've been at distilleries, in schools, in uh, restaurants or uh, uh, shopping centers. It has really helped us reach out into parts of the community we didn't know before and make new friends. And we have, I mean, I've been told that our clinics are the most fun because when you go there, it's not just about the shot. You can also pick up uh, first aid supplies and reading materials for your kids and all kinds of resources for your health and well-being due to the partners that join us. 
Well, both of you highlighted the um, important uh, aspects of, of partnerships and how that continues to um, be such a vital tool. And I would agree, it's obviously, uh, I'm a little biased, but being at those clinics, I think they are pretty fun. Uh, and, you know, I've heard from people, myself as well, you just about how it's, it's more than just getting your shot, right? It's, it's going in there and, you know, getting a lot of resources and, um, you know, it's definitely is something that is, is incredibly bi- uh, vital. So, um, Shelly, this next question is for you. I'm curious what, um, what has been some of the um, common aspects of um, doing these vaccine clinics that you have found to be um, difficult or challenging? Um, not only right now, obviously, as we're hitting barriers with people getting vaccinated, but as you've been doing this for the last several months. Well, as much as I'm inspired by the sense of community that happens, I am disheartened at times about the level of uh, protesting that's going on. It's an individual choice, of course it is, but this is not only about health, it's also about the economy and the investments needed in the vaccines are considerable, yet they also are impacted our economic downturn. And we really want local businesses to thrive because then we all thrive. I have had people close to me pass away, uh, people who are younger, not just old. Uh, I've been hearing things that rumors like it's only the elders who have chronic health conditions. That's not true. A dear friend of mine who's a pastor passed away and it was unexpected and was related to COVID. So mm-hmm. when people pass away, that's that's disheartening for me because I know we could have prevented it. Yeah. Michelle, I am sorry for your loss. I think that's um, definitely been an unfortunate tragedy and all of this, um, losing people that we know. Um, Jody, what, um, what things have you experienced? Well, I think the biggest thing, and I totally agree with Shelly too. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things is that, um, there's people that state, you know, they're not willing to listen to what the research says. And I really believe that it is an individual choice, but it is a choice that, um, I believe should be made um, as an informed choice, an informed decision, so that you know, you know, what the research really is out there. And, yeah. um, you know, that's a big part too. But, um, you know, I think another barrier is just making sure, you know, sometimes we didn't have, you know, we didn't advertise well. And, um, and so that's something that we can, that we've seen that we can definitely improve on, um, especially as we're creating these partnerships within our, our community and surrounding communities that we're, we're getting into as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a growing experience. And one of the things that we've, um, I guess I, something I wanted to highlight is, you know, a lot of us who are doing this work, um, have done a lot of community outreach. We've done a lot of social services, but not a lot of us have, um, you know, medical backgrounds or public health backgrounds. And so a lot of this is very new for us, right? Uh, As we try to figure out, you know, uh, understanding vaccines and understanding uh, what variants are and, you know, so on and so forth. And so I'm curious, uh, Shelly, this question will be for you, um, is what have you... I guess what what's something um, that you've learned uh, that you would like to share with our audience just from from doing these clinics and uh, something maybe unique? I don't know about unique, but I've certainly been encouraged about the rollout of safe and effective vaccines. I didn't know how quickly it could happen. I didn't know how effective. And each time we see a new wave, I am inspired that someone's behind the scenes making all this happen. COVID-19 has truly shown me how interdependent we all are and how reliant we are on communication, collaboration, cooperation, and compassion. uh, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We really do need each other in all of this. Uh, Jody, what about you? Um, I think, you know, a big takeaway, a big learning opportunity for me has been to learn more about each variant. Um, you know, the, the links that you and yourself, Lawrence, have shared um, have really been eye-opening because, you know, we can hear that there is this other variant. Um, but I think, you know, and, until you really know what that variant is and what it means and what it does, 
yeah. um, and how quickly, you know, I think that's one thing I've, I've really been drawn to is, is learning more about the variants. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely very fascinating as you start to understand it and, or at least get a, get a little bit of understanding of it. Right. <laughs> Take a right. while to understand all of it. <laughs> um, well, you know, we, we've had some conversations a lot about COVID and, and some of the things that, that both of you have learned. Um, this question would be for you, Jody. is, is I'm curious, you know, as we've talked about COVID, I also would like to hear just um, as an organization, you know, what, what is something unique about family education and support services? Um, aside from providing, you know, vaccine clinics, which you, you have both been such a pivotal part in, but, you know, what's something unique about family education and support services that you'd like to share with our audience today? Well, I think the, the biggest unique thing about our agency is that we really are um, about the family. Um, we, you know, in, in the things that we do, it really reminds me of that wraparound approach. You know, we have um, services for the entire family and beyond. Um, you know, we have, uh, we just, we go on to kinship and, you know, those types of things. So yeah. I think we're really unique in the fact that um, we're almost a, a one-stop shop for families needing support and education. Um, mm. Yeah. 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 That is so vital um, to be able to, I think one of the things that, that can be so hard as a social service agency is, is um, try not to send people go here for this and go here for that and go here for that. And so being able to be more of a, Hey, just come down the hall and we can talk to so-and-so I think is really great. Um, uh, yes. Shelly. Yeah, absolutely. Shelly. Um, Shelly, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we, as Jody said, we are a one-stop shop. We serve families of all sizes, shapes, and um, diverse representate cultures. And we've seen people come in for vaccination, moms bring their kids or kids bring their parents or soccer teams come and get it done together. It has been a community-wide effort. It's really nice to see the caring and support that happens when people come in to get vaccinated, even from our vendors who, who give out small squeeze balls to help people transition through the shop process. It's such yeah. a compassionate event. Hmm. Well, the work that both of you are doing is so vital um, and is so um, needed. Obviously, you know, these vaccines are life-saving, and um, but also the work that you all are doing is um, helping one person at a time is, is truly inc incredible. So I do want to thank you both for being on the podcast today. You know, as we come to a close, um, I'll start with you, Jody. Uh, I was just wondering if there's any final encouragement or just things that you would like to share even about uh, your organization uh, with our audience? Um, yeah, I, I really think that, you know, taking a look at, at our website at the very least and just see what we have to offer, um, I think is, you know, I look at it from time to time when I'm helping somebody else look at what programs we have. And I'm always in awe of, you know, what we do, you know, and I work here. And so it's, it's really inspiring to see that we can touch really each member of the family. And um, in the, I think one of the biggest things in our agency is we are, we are a team approach. We all work together with yeah. our various programs and we help one another. We share clients and participants. Um, so it's a really close knit, uh, we call fast family. And so mm. that's been really, that's been really, really nice. And yeah. We just have a lot to offer to to the communities. Uh, and before I go to you real quick, Shelly, I did want to add that we will put the link to uh, the Family Education Support Services website in the um, in the podcast notes so people can check it out. So go ahead, Shelly. Well, FES is dedicated to ensuring the health and well-being of children, and we can only do that by working together and make sure nobody's left behind. We are grateful for our partnerships with Choice Regional Health, CMAR, Community Wellness Network, and Coordinated Care, all the others that come join with us to help make sure we have a safe and healthy community. Thank you. We hope to see you at the next vaccine clinic. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you both to my guests, Shelly Willis and Jody Smetak for being on the podcast today and spending some time with us. I want to thank our listeners as well for listening to another episode of the Equity Circle podcast. Please make sure to subscribe and share with friends and family. Uh, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. That's how people find the podcast. And lastly, remember that equity equals progress.